plugging in my money-making machine. Oh yeah, plug-in solar is off to the races. From here on out, I can start saving every month on my power bill. Let me show you the final step to the installation of this Craftstrom solar kit. Let's connect this power meter to the app. First, with the power meter powered on, up here on the top of the power meter next to the power wires, there's this little button right here. That's the reset to button. We are going to press and hold that for 15 seconds minimum or longer. Okay, and then go ahead and release the button and uh, let this sit uh, for just a minute or two. And then grab your phone and the way to tell if that has been reset correctly is if you see this Wi-Fi CS as a network that's available. Okay, next we're going to open the app and I'm gonna to try to film it uh, as clearly as possible so you can see what I'm tapping on. We're gonna come down here to the bottom right and click on settings. Now we're gonna come up here to add new device and then select the correct Wi-Fi. It must be a 2.5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band and it does not work with Wi-Fi bands that are merged together. And I discovered this, it does not work with any SSIDs that have spaces in it. That got me stuck for a while. So make sure that the SSID is a 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth and it has no spaces in it whatsoever. So my SSID is gonna be Craftstrom Wi-Fi. I'll put in the password here. Now with that password in, we'll hit next. Now we want to add a power meter. So we'll go ahead and hit that. You can use the phone to scan the device ID, but we're just gonna do a manual entry. And then with that entered in, we're gonna hit next down here. Now it wants us to connect to the CS Wi-Fi. So we're gonna go ahead and open the network setting, come down here to the Wi-Fi CS. Now we're gonna go back to Craftstrom. And then now that we're back in the app, we're gonna click the button now that we've connected to that. And we've got it set up. Click go to the dashboard. Now it takes just a minute to uh, populate here because the power meter needs to connect uh, to the Wi-Fi and start talking to the server. Okay, pro tip on this. You can tell if it's connected to the Wi-Fi successfully if you can see that little phone receiver icon in the screen. That means that it has successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. And then maybe after one or two minutes of waiting, notice that uh, we have data on power being drawn from the grid at the moment, being consumed by the house. And if you scroll down here to communication and push this little plus button, it will open this up and you'll see that Wi-Fi communication with the power meter is a green check mark. And that's all there is to it, to connect this uh, power meter. Let me show you how to connect up these inverters to the app. I have a very important pro tip for you. Be sure and only power these on one at a time because they both broadcast the same default Wi-Fi SSID, and so you won't know which one you're trying to add. So just do them one at a time. It'll simplify your life. And when you first apply power to it, there is a little indicator light in that little window for that antenna. Right now it's solid red. And that's because I've only hooked up the solar to it. I have yet to connect the AC power. Okay, let's uh, plug in the AC power, just like that. And uh, you'll notice that uh, the red light starts to blink rapidly now. So now that the inverter has proper power to it, I'm gonna come over to the left side and right above where the antenna plugs in, there's a silver button. We're going to press and hold that for 15 seconds. And that's going to reset this inverter and make it so that it is ready to pair. And now you'll notice we have a steady blue light in that window. And you can tell that it's ready because we see the Wi-Fi CS network now in the Wi-Fi. So now in the Craftstrom app, we're going to come down here to the settings. We're going to come here to add new device. We'll go ahead and put in the Wi-Fi credentials that we want it to connect to. And now we want to add a solar panel right here. So we'll go ahead and hit that. Once again, I like to enter things manually. Next, it's gonna ask you a question on which phase the solar is plugged into. If you remember my power meter installation video, the breaker panel is split into two legs of 120 volts. So that's what this question is asking. And I actually don't know. There's an easy way to find out, especially if you've already installed your power meter, which you should before you are installing the solar panels. So in order to check this, we need to leave this set up for just a minute. Come down here to the dashboard. Here we are in the dashboard. Scroll down, all the way down until you see my power. And if you look here, the power meter is measuring consumption on phase one and phase two. So currently measuring 750 watts and one kilowatt uh, respectively. So next, I've just got uh, this shop back plugged into the same cord that uh, the solar is going to plug into eventually here. And I'm gonna turn it on and then we'll update this and we'll see which leg has increased in power consumption. And then we'll know which leg of power the solar is plugged into. 
So the app doesn't update right away. So to update it, what we're gonna do is just come to the top and pull it. So updates, and then scroll back down here. If you notice, phase one has two kilowatts on it now instead of 750. So we know that those solar panels are going to be plugged into phase one. So that's an easy way to determine that using the power meter that comes with the kit. And you can see now that that uh, shot vac is turned off. Phase one has dropped back down to 750 watts. So phase one is confirmed to be where the solar is plugging into. So coming back here to the setup, we're gonna go ahead and hit phase one. We'll hit next. So now it wants us to go and connect to the CS Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi CS as it shows up here. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to that. Come back to the Craftroom app and then push this button. We have to push on after we connect and we're set up. So we'll give this a few minutes to populate and we should start seeing some power from just the one solar panel we've set up so far. So tapping on the bottom left here to dashboard, and we'll come back to the dashboard. We still don't have any production showing up yet. Uh, if we come down here to communication and open that, you will see that we do have our internal communications happening between the solar and the power meter, as well as Wi-Fi communication. So all of that uh, is working. So we got the inverter under that panel paired. So now we're going to just repeat the same steps for this next panel. I have yet to uh, connect up the other two panels, but I just wanna show you. Look how awesome, 286 watts coming in. The house is consuming 916. We're only drawing like 600-ish watts from the grid. Isn't that sweet? Okay, fast forward a few days and uh, got everything hooked up here. So all 800 watts of solar hooked up. Now you can see my shadow is very long. That's because uh, it's late fall at this point and kind of in the afternoon. I've got a little shading happening over here, so this isn't going to be optimal. In the dashboard section here, you can come here to where it says communication. We'll expand that and you can see our internal communication on the megahertz bandwidth. If we tap on that, you can see that both inverters are communicating correctly. And if we tap on the power meter, we can see that that is working correctly. And then the Wi-Fi communication, we can tap on that. And we can see that both inverters are working and the power meter as well. And right now I have a very small load from my house. And you can see right now the solar is only producing 24 watts. So the throttling is working. When we scroll down here, we can see that on phase one where my solar panels are connected, I am only consuming about 60 watts from the grid is all. Phase two has 270. So to offset that, I need to plug into phase two with some additional solar. That's working very, very well. Aha, check it out. I turned something on that is a little heavier load inside. And look at that, 328 watts. Last time this updated. And you can see down here, which is very, very cool. On phase one, we're pulling 690. And phase two, we're pulling the full 990. Oh, it's working. This is totally sweet. And I'm getting less than stellar performance once again, because the angle is off. You can see my shadow in relation to the angle of the panels. And then I've also got some shading up there in that top left corner. But this is where microinverters uh, really come into play because even though these two panels are reduced in performance due to that shading, those two panels are unaffected because they're not part of that string. There's just two, uh, one microinverter for those two panels and one microinverter for those two panels. So let me give you a quick tour of this app here. You've got a little weather forecast and then uh, this is constantly changing, but this is your feed from your power meter, how much power your house is consuming from the grid, how much power you're producing from the solar, and then the sum total of what your house is consuming. I do not have any battery packs connected at this point. Next, we have this communication uh, thing right here that you can expand, and we already went over that. But that's just so you can make sure that everything is communicating correctly. And then we have this uh, day chart right here that uh, just kind of gives you a snapshot of overall power consumed, power produced. Now, it wasn't uh, very much uh, today because I barely got my second inverter hooked up. I kind of got de delayed from when I first started de hooking this up, but we're up and going now. And this is pretty cool. This uh, gives you kind of a snapshot on a chart of your power production during the day. These little spikes and stuff are from uh, the house over the course of the day. And then down here, this yellow is the power produced. And uh, you can see right there when I hooked up my second solar panel, how much that uh, made a difference in my uh, power production. Little spike there when I turned on my heavy load to show you what happens. Uh, 
when it's not throttling. And then we went over this, this kind of just shows you your two phases and uh, what phase is pulling, you know, how many watts. And this gives you a rating for your impact on the environment. Coming down here, we can hit uh, usage. And this is a reading on a nice little graph showing us the consumption from the power meter or in other words, from the grid, our usage from the grid. And you can sort it uh, by different phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, if you have three phase, you know, sort it by day, week, month, year, etc. Coming down here to the production tab, this is gonna show us a snapshot of the production that the solar has done over the course of the day, which is pretty cool. You can also sort it by week, month, year, and hour. And you can do it by individual inverters, or you can do all panels if you want and uh, see the production of all the panels. You can see where I hooked up the second inverter. We're shooting up there. It does take uh, just a minute to populate, especially on this day. On the hour chart, you can see it pretty good here, uh, but you can see how well it throttles. You know, a little bit of power here, then stop. A little power there and stop, because uh, the loads vary in one's house, right? And then coming down here to the storage option, this is where you'd be able to see information about your batteries. I don't have any of those yet, uh, but uh, once I do, I'll show you how that all works. And we're pretty familiar with the settings tab, but this is simply where you add your device. Once they're added, uh, you can see the panels. So these are the different inverters. You can rename them if you want, and you can change what phase they're on if you want to move it from one phase to another. This is where you can also delete them. You hit the little trash can if you want to get rid of them and then re-add them later. Same thing in the power meter section here. This is where you can manage your power meter, but uh, there's nothing that happens if you tap on it. It's just a place to see your power meter and delete it if you need to. And then this is where we'd see batteries if we had any batteries, but there's no batteries found because I don't have any at this point. You can select a, a time zone, change that if you want to. You can update the server certificate and uh, you only do that uh, if you uh, need to hard reset your uh, inverters for some reason. And then you can log out. I just never get tired of seeing this. So now the load in my house is ramped down and you can see that we're just producing like 111 watts. Obviously this array is capable of doing even more if I didn't have shading and a more uh, perfect angle on the sun, but it's still very cool to see it throttling itself so it just offsets your power. So I think Craftstrom's really done a nice job with their app. It provides you the information that you need without being too crazy, right? We've got uh, more content about this coming up. First and foremost, I'm going to show you how you can do a Craftstrom system using just uh, straight glass panels. So that's next. And I may even show you something epic that uh, there's a trick for that that is known for and a little trick to make your Craftstrom system even more epic. So you're not going to want to miss that. I also have the smart breaker that uh, this plugs into because I've actually got this plugged into a shared circuit. I'm going to be doing a whole video about how to set that up and how it works. And then finally, I've uh, deployed this on a property that has no solar, and we're going to do long-term testing on this to see how much it offsets the electric bill. We're gonna be doing that over the course of an entire year. However, I'm gonna be bringing you along for periodic updates, um, maybe once a quarter, at very least, every six months. So that way you can kind of see how it's performing and how my return on investment is going. And then we'll probably get a chance to play with some batteries and uh, whatnot uh, in the future too. So anyway, more great content uh, coming up. Please be sure and leave your comments down below on what you think of this. If you own a system and uh, you know, you've know you run into a hiccup or whatever, let us know uh, down in the comments uh, so we can uh, learn from what happened uh, to you and how you got it resolved. That will also help me because if I start seeing you know a bunch of the similar types of issues uh, being voiced down in the comments, that'll also help me because I could uh, potentially replicate the issue and then make a video about uh, how to resolve it. So I definitely look forward to hearing that feedback down in the comments. So be sure and do the five free things like, comment, share, subscribe, and hype so that I can continue to bring this kind of epic content to you. And I also just want to say a big shout out to those of you that watch the videos until the very end, start to finish. Thank you. Thank you. Keep up the good work on that because you just never know when that might pay off for you here in the future. All right, everyone, stay safe and we'll catch y'all next time.